Boards like this are pretty tough to review, especially having fallen all the way down the custom keyboard rabbit hole over the past year, but it's important to remember that not everybody wants to source parts, lube switches, and spend a large chunk of their rent on a keyboard. Some people just want to go out, buy a keyboard, put it on their desk, and use it to play games. That's why I will always review pre-built gaming keyboards, provided they bring something unique to the space. The Streak 65 LP definitely does, and it improves in a number of ways on the original board that we saw debut almost a year ago. You ready? Let's go! So the original Streak 65 debuted last November at $109.99 US, and it was one of those rare products that the vast majority of peripheral reviewers had really good things to say about. They got a lot right there that we continue to see here at $119.99, and they listened to the constructive feedback. First off, it's available in white now, which looks incredible. If the RGB on the black version is a little too muted for you, this one really goes over the top. We still have the same 65% layout, so you get your dedicated arrows and four extra keys on the far right column, and you do have access to your function row as long as you hit function and whatever the number is. It's still really lightweight too at approximately 420 grams, yet it still doesn't really slide around on the desk. It's still that low profile design that not only has that shorter case, but a custom version of the Kale Chalk V2 switches as well. These are roughly two third the height of a standard mechanical switch. They have fanatic orange barrel stems, no stem wobble to speak of, and they have a total travel of 3.2 millimeters versus the industry standard four millimeters. They actuate at one millimeter, making them very fast. They're linear, 45 gram weight. They are MX compatible, in the event you want to change the keycaps, just keep in mind that the caps are low profile as well. And larger keycaps will still actuate, but often bottom out on the case top. Thing is, you probably won't ever need to replace the keycaps because unlike the painted ABS versions they used on the original, these are double shot shine through PVT. These are nice and thick with a good bit of texture. They feel really good. They should be durable for the long term. This was the biggest single complaint of the first board, so it's good to see. Legends look solid, lighting looks solid, no fingerprints, no oil. Big fan of this change. I also like how they've gone with the light gray for the secondary legends on the caps. It really helps the clean aesthetic on the white and doesn't make things look too busy. One thing they definitely got right on the first board were the stabilizers, which have a lot to do with how a keyboard sounds, and we continue to see that here. Factory lubed, they sound great for a pre-built gaming board. They also added an additional layer of sound dampening inside the case as well. Love it. We still see the little detail stuff like the Fnatic logos on the exposed PCB under the spacebar, as well as the additional RGB LEDs under there to give a fuller lighting saturation across the spacebar area, and we do still have that backlit Fnatic logo. Still have the Fnatic branding on the forehead of the board, as well as the full front, which is a shine-through LED badge that is removable and replaceable. Because this board sits so low to the desk and only has a front case height of roughly 12 millimeters, you don't really need a wrist rest, and the flat profile of the caps makes it very comfortable for longer sessions. They still retain the single adjustment flip down feet in case you need to add a little angle. All this lighting is customizable as well and you have full access to rebind both the main layer keys as well as the function layer so you can really set this up how you need to. This is all done with the Fnatic OP software which is available for both Mac and Windows. The rebinding worked okay here and traveled with the board and I did like that you can completely move the function key if you want. The only catch with the software that I could find is if you use one of the rebinds to launch a program that only seems to function for me with the software still loaded. All the other stuff like the lighting, the rebinds, the Mac macros, all that stuff works without the software in the background. It could be too that the software just hasn't been updated to work with the new version of this keyboard as the only one I could select in the software was the older version. They swapped out the original cable for a simple braided coiled cable this time around, still USB-C, still left side mounted. These low profile switches really perform well in game and unlike a lot of speed switches, I don't find myself activating them accidentally and I don't have a ton of typos when I'm working on docks. If you caught the original video on that first board, my copy had a strange QC issue where there was like a little bend throughout the whole chassis. It didn't prove to be anything widespread, and this version of this keyboard doesn't seem to have any QC issues that I can find even after using it for a few weeks. I hate this f***ing keyboard. I'm kidding, of course, but this might be the first product in my entire history of reviewing where I really can't find anything to criticize. It's low profile, it's designed to travel really well, it's a readily available 65% layout, it uses unique switch tech, it sounds pretty good for a pre-built gaming board, the white looks super clean, and Fnatic addressed virtually every complaint I had with the original board. I mean, if I'm really nitpicking, the screw heads are visible in between some of the keycaps, but like, 
That's a reach. The fact that they made all the upgrades, including those PBT keycaps, for only a $10 price increase should be applauded. They could have easily got us for $10 to $20 more than that. It doesn't offer a lot in the way of additional customization, like there's no hot swap and the keycap swaps are limited, unlike the recently announced next wave of ducky boards. But that's not really what they were going for here. It's a solid, low-profile, pre-built, buy-it-and-use-it type keyboard, and it's just really well executed. Maybe not gonna offer the same speed as like really tweaking a Hall Effect switch like on the Apex or the Woody boards, but again, low profile, small form factor. I got nothing else to say. Fnatic did a great job with this board and it gets an easy and enthusiastic recommendation from me. I want to give a big shout out to today's sponsor, Brilliant. Brilliant is an online learning platform that puts a big emphasis on interactive learning. I learn best when I'm looking at concepts from a couple different angles or when I'm applying lessons and ideas to something that feels a little bit more real world to me, like what I'm actually doing, not just watching or memorizing. And this year has seen Brilliant refreshing a lot of their courses to really dial up that level of interactivity. One they finally refreshed that I've been waiting for is their course on logic. Logical problem solving is important to me because it helps keep me sharp when I'm looking at my everyday life. Like when I have complex scheduling demands or tasks, it allows me to take the emotion and the stress out, arrange those tasks in an order that makes the most sense, and that really improves my overall productivity. Brilliant is a great way to just jump in, learn at your own pace, and if something isn't clicking for you, they offer detailed explanations to help you get a better handle on it. They have a huge catalog too, so no matter what your goals or your course of study, if it revolves around math and science, Brilliant definitely has you covered. When you're ready to get smarter, you can join me and a community of over 8 million learners and educators by going to brilliant.org slash badseedtech. As a bonus, the first 200 of you to do so will save 20% on the annual membership. Big thanks to Brilliant for continuing to support the channel, and thank you so much for your time. I know how valuable it is, and this channel simply wouldn't exist without the support from you and from our sponsors. All right, any questions, hit me in the comments, and I will catch you all in the next one. Stay up.